An FDA advisory panel has recommended emergency use of Moderna's coronavirus vaccine here in the United States. The FDA could authorize the vaccine as early as Friday. That means nearly 6 million doses could be shipped out next week. And they can't come soon enough. The U.S. is breaking COVID records daily. The total number of cases has now surpassed 17 million. Nearly 250,000 new cases were reported Wednesday alone. More than 3,600 died. Meanwhile, California has become the new epicenter of the crisis. The state confirmed more than 52,000 new cases in a single day. And health officials warn it will only get worse. On Capitol Hill, Congress is still working on a coronavirus relief package, but they may be close to a deal. Jonathan Vigliotti begins our coverage in Southern California. In a unanimous decision, the FDA panel says the Moderna vaccine is safe and should get emergency authorization. A final sign-off would allow 6 million initial doses to be shipped across the country. Nowhere is the need more urgent than in California, with more than 100,000 new coronavirus cases in just two days. Even more shocking, hospitals in Southern California are now at 0% availability. At Arrowhead Regional Medical Center outside of LA, the ICU beds are full. Patients are now being treated inside these tents. We're at the point where we no longer could take care of them. You know, we're doing our best. In L.A. County, where one in 80 people is believed to be contagious with COVID, ambulances are waiting hours outside hospitals to unload patients. We've had um, instances where it's been up to six and seven hours. California's mass fatality plan kicking into high gear. The state buying 5,000 body bags and rolling in 60 refrigerated storage units, which will be used as morgues. Today, healthcare workers at LA's Cedars Sinai got their first dose of the Pfizer vaccine as the county pushes to vaccinate 6,000 frontline workers by Christmas. Meanwhile, state leaders nationwide are warning people the vaccine won't cure foolish decisions. It won't cure an attitude of a refusal to wear a mask. Paul and Rose Blackwell dedicated their lives to education and raising their own five children. Paul was a middle school football coach, Rose, a bilingual teacher. They both contracted COVID-19 earlier this month. And when it became clear neither would survive, their hospital beds were put together side by side, and they died holding each other's hand. I've never seen anything like that before. Uh, it's hard to even put into words seeing that they said till death do us part and um and that's how that went fema is sending in 80 health care workers to the state of california and the governor is calling on the department of defense to send in hundreds more as backup lana heartbreaking and loving jonathan thank you Pfizer's vaccine supply may not be as scarce as initially thought. Hospitals across the country have discovered that the vials actually carry an extra dose. Errol Barnett explains. Having trouble going even more than a few minutes today without crying. Doctors at Cleveland's Metro Health Hospital confirmed tonight they are able to vaccinate hundreds more people. After discovering they can extract six doses of the Pfizer vaccine from a single vial rather than the expected five. The manufacturers, they wanted to make sure that each dose was full and there was room for error. Also tonight, the Moderna vaccine may soon become a second weapon against COVID-19. With these new developments, the expectation is that 20 million Americans could receive their first shot by the end of the year. CBS News has learned that at least seven states are receiving fewer doses of the Pfizer vaccine next week than anticipated. And we're working with Pfizer, but they're going to need help from us on their manufacturing. But in a statement, Pfizer disputes that, saying they're not having any production issues, adding, quote, we have millions more doses sitting in our warehouse and have not received any shipment instructions for additional doses. There are differences between the two vaccines. Pfizer's must be stored at a lower temperature, while Moderna's has a much longer shelf life in a regular fridge. The Moderna, which can be kept in a regular type refrigerator and freezer, that might be more appropriate for, say, nursing homes and rural places. Nursing homes like this one in Lago, Florida, began administering the Pfizer vaccine. 85 residents were vaccinated today. 
My family, they, they was totally against it. Lieutenant Delmar Henderson changed his mind about vaccination because his immunocompromised 70 year old father told him it was the right thing to do. My, my dad always been there for me and my brother. And that's my guy. After receiving the vaccine, he paid his dad a socially distanced visit. The first time they'd seen each other face to face in months. How you feel? It went good. I feel good. I got to talk to my doctor, though, but I'm going, I'm going to take it. Back here at Metro Health, they expect to have vaccinated roughly 800 people before the end of the day, like all the folks you see behind me. They've filled out vaccination forms to track when they need their second shot in three weeks, and they're waiting 15 minutes tracked by these timers for any possible side effects. Doctors emphasize vaccines alone will not end this pandemic, Lana. They say it's people getting vaccinated which will make this all a memory. Wow, oh, Errol, thank you. And Dr. Eve DeRoso joins me now to discuss it in further detail. He's the chair of the Department of Emergency Medicine at Lenox Hill Hospital. Dr. DeRoso, as we've been reporting, an FDA advisory panel has recommended Moderna's vaccine for emergency use authorization. You heard Errol describe some of the ways in which uh, the two vaccines are different in terms of their refrigeration needs. Uh, how else does Moderna's vaccine compare to Pfizer's? Well, it's very similar uh, technology, which is good. Actually, one of the silver linings out of all of this is that we found a new way to produce vaccinations. Uh, in the past, we relied on egg material to culture and uh, grow uh, the vaccine, so to speak, which uh, takes a long time. And one of the reasons we're able to get these vaccinations to market so quickly and efficiently has to do with the new technology around mRNA. So this is very, very exciting uh, development. Now, the storage uh, issues, th that is a, a, an issue. Uh, okay, if you can imagine, if you have to store at uh, less than 70 degrees uh, below temperature, uh, there's some uh, uh, logistical issues. So with the Moderna, which doesn't require quite uh, to be stored at such a low degrees, uh, it, it has an advantage in terms of uh, uh, being able to be stored closer to where the patient is, is going to get the drug. And Dr. DeRosa, we've uh, we've known about some adverse reactions that have um, that patients have experienced with both vaccines. We've seen a few allergic reactions to Pfizer's vaccine and some incidences of Bell's palsy in both vaccine trials. Tell our viewers first of all what that is and what else we should know about potential side effects. Yeah, so the uh, allergic reactions are occurring. So if you've had severe anaphylactic where your, your lips are swollen or you've had some difficulty breathing uh, from any previous uh, other medication, uh, it, it's probably best at this point, uh, we're still learning uh, to, to avoid uh, the, the medication. Um, in terms of the Bell's palsy, we're still learning about that. Uh, Bell's palsy is just a transient, often limited time period of a uh, paralysis of the facial muscles uh, that is usually self-resolves could last for a week to two a uh, very very few people uh, end up with a permanent less than one percent of bell's palsy so we're still learning a lot more about this but um we have to be very very careful that uh these kind of stories don't um really uh scare people into not taking the vaccination uh the vaccination is safe um COVID is not safe uh, the vaccination is safe COVID is not safe I have to re-emphasize that the deaths that are occurring that was shown in the stories you showed before are heartbreaking. Uh, and we, we just cannot continue Absolutely. to live uh, with this. Uh, I, I, we know that people um, who have had severe allergic reactions to vaccines before have been told not to get the vaccine at this point. Um, for somebody who's had Bell's palsy before, should they be concerned about whether or not they are a good candidate for getting this vaccine? I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't be. I wouldn't recommend a patient uh, stay away because of that previous Bell's. Bell's palsy can be caused and triggered by many uh, different things, uh, like a virus uh, of some sort. Uh, and again, it, it goes away just because you had it once. Um, we we haven't seen that. That's necessarily going to predispose you to getting it again. Uh, but everything I say today, uh, it is very possible as we learn more uh, that uh, recommendations may change. But for today, I, I wouldn't advise. Um, uh, staying away because of that one condition.
And, and to your point, it's so important that people do get vaccinated, in part because there are some people uh, for whom the, they can't get vaccinated, so they're counting on all of us. Uh, I want to talk a little bit about what happens once you get vaccinated. I, I believe you were, you were just vaccinated. How exactly does the coronavirus vaccine protect you from the virus? Very good question. So uh, what it does is basically uh, this mRNA uh, triggers uh, what we call the, the spike proteins, the little crowns that you see uh, around the virus in all the pictures, and it makes uh, that crown produce itself. And then when, when the body sees that, it develops antibodies uh, against that. So we're not introducing uh, the, the coronavirus. You cannot get uh, corona from this. Uh, what it, it does is it, it, it looks like the, the spike protein, your body develops antibodies. So if and ever your body's um, exposed uh, to corona, your body will have the defenses to fight against it. Very novel and very interesting uh, uh, technology. It's so interesting how this has been developed and the advancements that are being made. Um, Health and Human Services Secretary Alex Azar says coronavirus mutations are not a concern yet after our health officials in the UK discovered a new variant. What's your take on this, Dr. Giroso? Again, you know, these are, these are the kind of stories that we have to be very cautious about because uh, people hear mutations and it, it scares folks. Um, yes, viruses do, in fact, mutate. Uh, the flu virus, for example, mutates every, every year. Uh, but that doesn't mean that uh, the uh, vaccination is not going to be effective. So th there is a possibility that it mutates to something different, but for now we're not showing that. And uh, usually sometimes if it's close enough to uh, what the virus has been, the uh, immunization is going to work uh, across the board for corona in general. So we have to be very cautious with how we tell these stories um, because we don't really want to scare folks. We really want to encourage folks to take the vaccination. Again, we cannot continue to have close to 3,000 deaths a year in this country. And that's why we appreciate you coming on and separating out some of what people are hearing from, from the actual facts of the matter. One last question for you, doctor. The virus is spreading at unprecedented rates in several parts of the country, especially in California, where officials have implemented stay-at-home measures. Why aren't we seeing any improvement, even with these new restrictions? It's our behavior. It's, it's, it's our responsibility uh, uh, as a society uh, to continue to wear masks, to wash our hands, to socially distance, and to answer your question specifically, it's the gathering. It's what occurred in Thanksgiving uh, that we're seeing people being hospitalized and unfortunately dying. And what we're afraid of is now as we enter a new holiday a period in the holiday season that people, can you imagine uh, around the religious holidays, the secular holidays, and the New Year's, and we're going to have surge upon surge if we do not take the responsibility uh, to shelter in place, to not gather to wear our masks, to wash our hands, to socially distance. It doesn't cost you anything. Please, please, if that's the one message that you hear today, that's what we want to emphasize. All right, Dr. DeRoso, thank you. Thank you for this opportunity. Have a, a wonderful holiday season. Stay safe.